Hello, this is a microscopic slide of a colon tumour and uh, we can see here that this is the normal colonic mucosa. Here is the submucosa, the muscularis propria with the two layers and here is the subserosal fat. Starting from this point and over here where I am highlighting here, this is where there is a tumour and this is an invasive tumour. We can see that the abnormal area invades all the way into the submucosa through the muscularis propria and even beyond into the subserosal tissue. The diagnosis here is adenocarcinoma of the colon. Let's first have a look at the normal colonic mucosa and we can see that they are very regularly arranged crypts. The crypts are lined by cells uh, with very basally located nuclei and they have these extremely prominent and um, abundant goblet cells. So these goblet cells contain mucin and then we can see here the muscularis mucosa with the submucosa and below this the muscularis propria. So everything is very orderly here. And when we compare this with the area of the tumour, we can straight away see side by side. This is uh, cancerous or malignant glands. This is benign colonic mucosa. The architecture is very disrupted in the tumour. In fact, we can see that in some areas, the glands are kind of joining up and they are sharing walls. And this kind of appearance with these many holes or many openings is known as a cribriform architecture. So we have cribriform architecture, we have irregular glands. Moving on to this frankly invasive area, we can see the glands are angulated, they are branching, they are not nice and round like the benign crypts. So this is architectural atypia and complexity. And in fact, in some of the neoplastic malignant glands, we can also see necrosis. And you'll also notice that the stroma around these invasive neoplastic malignant glands is rather active. It's more cellular than just regular submucosa. First of all, there are more of these plumb to spindle cells. These are fibroblasts. And secondly, there are also these inflammatory cells, which you can see these small nuclei. Some of them are lymphocytes. There are a few neutrophils as well. And we can see the stroma is rather cellular and disturbed and disrupted. This is known as desmoplastic stroma. And this usually occurs in the context of invasive tumours. Let's compare this with the submucosal tissue that is not involved by tumour. And here is a side-by-side -side direct comparison. These are malignant, complex, cribriforming glands with a desmoplastic stroma. And here are these benign, very smooth, rounded crypts. And this is the submucosal tissue where you can see the stroma is a lot less cellular and less disturbed. Now, this would also be a good time to compare the appearance of the cells or the cytomorphology between benign and malignant. And as mentioned in the benign crypts, the nuclei are all peripherally or basally located. We have a lot of these goblets as compared to the malignant tumour where you can see that the nuclei are much larger. Some of the cells have prominent nucleoli as well as you can see here. The nuclei are stratified they are more pleomorphic and we can also see very plentiful mitotic figures. For example, there is one here and if we move around, we can easily identify mitotic figures, another one here. And just notice how much larger the nuclei are. And the other feature is that the nuclei are present at all levels of the cells. So they're not nicely polarized or basally located. They are stratified. So in summary, here is a case of adenocarcinoma of the colon where we have malignant glands which are complex, irregular and showing cribriform areas and there is a surrounding desmoplastic stroma and also the glands are lined by cytologically malignant cells 
showing nuclear enlargement, pleomorphism, prominent nucleoli, loss of nuclear polarity, and also frequent mitotic figures. And if we pull back, we can also see that this tumor is clearly invading into the submucosa, into the muscularis propria, and beyond the muscularis propria, into the subserosal tissue. Thank you.